Hi everybody, this is just a short video to tell you a little bit about business and the community's viewpoint when it comes to new legislation that's being discussed at EU level when it comes to sustainability. So we wanted to take 10 or 15 minutes maybe Thomas just to tell the audience what's happening in the EU, EU what to expect and what they need to know and how they can get their business ready for this. As you know, like every day now, there are articles about sustainability, uh, items like non-financial reporting, ESG, uh, net zero, all this is being discussed, not in the media, not only in the media, I should say, but also in the DAW. Thomas, what's your viewpoint? What's happening at the EU level? And what do Irish business need to know about? Absolutely. Well, uh, the, the thing more is that there's a lot happening at the EU level right now. And I think it is really exciting because on the one hand, uh, investors are very concerned about sustainability and the very famous Larry Fink letter every year and he clearly said last year climate risk is investor risk. We have seen movements like Black, Black Lives Matter which are really concerning and a, a real demonstration of a, an unequal society, obviously not just a US problem but clearly also a European problem. That is also having consequences in how investors, consumers, employees, society at large, and of course, regulators uh, view a business and the role that business is playing in that transition to an inclusive society and a net zero economy that we all need, need to achieve. So obviously the EU is, uh, is part of this and, and it's very sensitive to uh, what this is happening. And there are four exciting things uh, in, in, in my view happening. So the first one is related to non-financial reporting and I will have to apologize, there's a lot of jargon here so we'll do our best to, to explain. But if we look at uh, non-financial reporting, that is essentially the, 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 the need for companies to account not only for their sales or their EBITDA, their, their, their ultimate financial results, but also for the impact both negative and positive that companies have on the environment, on nature and on people. So it is very important to bring together that financial and non-financial movement. And that's why in 2014, the commission issued this non-financial reporting directive. This year, that directive will be reviewed and updated. What is it that we should be expecting? Uh, I would say, Firstly, um, a change in terms of the scope. So at the moment, it's only companies that have 500 employees or more and mm. are publicly listed. It would be expected that the, the scope will uh, bring uh, even smaller companies. And I think there's a, an important point that I would say from, from, from our perspective, we have to, it, proportionality has, is important because you have to mind smaller companies with uh, less capacity sure. uh, to, to comply with all, all, all these requirements. So change in scope. The Commission has also spoken about bringing standards to help uh, companies disclose their, their data and their KPIs and also more, uh, more materiality. So that means more relevant topics need to be bring, brought in terms of how, how what the information that companies are, are reporting. One final thing I would say about non-financial reporting is it, 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 just giving a number, and this is kind of one of the debates that we are discussing in, the, in, in, in watching in the doll, it's not just about disclosing the numbers. So what's, our, what's your carbon footprint? What's mm. your gender pay gap? Yeah. We need to provide a context. And that's why it's important that whatever the final legislation is going to be at the European level and whatever is transposed eventually in Ireland, that it talks about it, it, companies disclosing KPIs. So therefore targets, not just outputs. The overall strategy and the overall business plan that will will impact on, on 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 that transition to net zero and to and to inclusivity, and also the risk management perspective. So, what are the risks to climate and to society of the business plan of the company going forward, and and the governance, how this is being governed? So, okay. it, it's an exciting space, and th I think that's that's one that it's it's worth watching, and 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 it's all about anticipating legislation and trying to find. Uh, a, a dimension where companies are already giving information and understanding that there's a big appetite for this information. It's not just about ticking the box and saying, I, I, I comply. And we can come back to, to, to that later. Yeah, that's the second point that I think is really interesting, there's changes coming in terms of investors. And uh, from March of this year, as part of the EU Sustainable Finance initiative, which is also part of the EU Green Deal, and, and this whole vision about how we're going to recover and rebuild the European economy. 
uh, asset managers are required to disclose the ESG, there you go, the jargon, the environmental, social and governance credentials of the funds that they're offering in, in, in the market. So ultimately, what we're going to see very soon are uh, labels like the label you have in your fridge telling you what's the energy efficiency of the product, a label that will give you the information of what, what are the ESG credentials of the different funds. And I think that's really interesting because it shows the awareness there is and, and, and the need uh, for consumers in general uh, to access products that are very much aligned to their needs and, and their values. And very mm -hmm. briefly, two more, two more things happening in terms of director's duties, that's also very exciting for the, for the world of governance. So it's about uh, looking at how um, directors in businesses have to act in the best interests of the company. There's no doubt about that. But in doing that, these new requirements will ask directors to identify the risks, again, to the environment, to nature and, and to society of the, of the business operations and to provide an action plan as to how those risks will be mitigated. So acting in the best interest of the company will mean necessarily looking at the long term and not just at, at the short term. So that's very interesting. And there's a final part which is related to due diligence. Uh, countries like France already have due diligence legislation. That's very much about making companies accountable for the impacts of their operations across the supply chain. Again, very complex area, and, and Maura, you know, we discussed this very much with our the report we launched last year on the scope three emissions. So across the supply chain of companies, yeah. the requirement will be not only on, on, on emissions, but we also be on human rights. And human rights is a critical dimension when you think about very complex supply chains, international supply chains where companies are procuring products from, from all over the world, working conditions, living conditions, a minimum wage, et cetera must be adhered. And at the end of the day, this is very much about managing a risk that it's up and coming. So that's a huge amount to absorb. So we have four key things coming down the pipe from the EU, which might be transposed into Irish law, but it's non-financial reporting and possibly changing the parameters and bringing more companies into the fold for that mandatory reporting. Then we would have the investor community, the asset management and actually having ESG, environmental social governance uh, data around that. And then third, the role of the board. And that's come up in a lot. Of, we actually did an event last year with the right. Institute of Directors on how do you upskill your board to talk about these big issues, not just look at a profit and loss sheet, look at climate change, look at biodiversity, look at diversity and inclusion. And then the due diligence. Uh, we know that human rights, we've advised a lot of our companies on Modern Slavery Act, human rights and going back in the supply chain. Thomas, what's your point of view when it comes to the carrot and stick approach? You know, we often have big debates in business, the community about, you know, it's great to have companies wanting to look at climate change and diversity and inclusion and loads of our members do. And so there's a willingness there, but legislation does help move the dial, doesn't it? I mean, what's your point of view about the need for legislation? And I don't know about you, but I would want to be a company that's ahead of the legislation, not playing catch up all the time. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think it's, it's good that we're having this conversation. I think for many years, this whole area of, um, corporate social responsibility, ESG sustainability was very much about this is the voluntary nature and this is the voluntary space of the company. I still defend that, but I also defend that accountability and transparency are critical and we need to keep on raising the standards constantly. So obviously legislation has to evolve. Societal expectations are, are rising and that is a, a, a challenge uh, for, for, for regulators to try and, 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 and shape and model responsible business behaviors, because that's what ultimately this is all about. The European Commission always talks about the smart mix of measures. That's what I think in our language means the carrot and the stick. So that's why I do think that ultimately, if legislation is coming, it is important to raise awareness, to build capacity, to help companies collaborate. And that's something we do a lot in business in the community Ireland, where companies from different sectors come together for instance, through a low carbon pledge, we, we try and understand where the opportunities are and how we can, we can, we can find common solutions to some of the, of the challenges we have. But yes, it is, it, it is about the, the capacity building, the proportionality I was talking before. So obviously helping the smaller companies, this is not about the large company just throwing all these requirements down their supply chain, but exactly. it, it, it's about helping your suppliers and ultimately understanding that these requirements are going to create new markets 
markets for socially responsible and environmentally friendly products. We've always discussed how it is important that we all lead by example. And we know that many of our members are at tender processes where they're being asked to demonstrate their credentials on, on ESG. So having some element of the legislation is important. I think nobody would argue today that we shouldn't have um, health and safety legislation. It's absolutely paramount yeah. and critical. Maybe 20 years ago, we were debating, should we let companies decide or not? Should we let companies manage their own waste and their own carbon emissions? Now we realize that it, 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 it has to evolve with, 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 with that expectation. You and I always talk about the plastic bag levy and, and the changes it, it, it brought. It brought a change of behavior on, on, on our citizens. And, and I think that's what, what the legislation is trying to do. So I think it is important we have the debate about what's the best legislation, the best regulation that will influence best businesses on the long-term thinking. But ultimately we need to have that, that, that coexistence and, and make sure that's used for, for continuous improvement. Let's get practical for a second. Uh, and let's close out with a practical question because I, I, I don't know about you, but like we've, we've been doing this for 21 years of business in the community of Ireland. It is great to see that everybody's talking about it now. We always prayed for this day. But I think the big challenge is people get bamboozled by the language, bamboozled by all of this new EU legislation coming down the pipe. Practically, what's your advice to companies to get ready for this either legislation or these you know, pressures from employees and investors and your customers asking about this? Practically, what... Uh, we've done loads of things in the business, the community uh, network, but practically what's your advice to companies? What's the steps they can take to get ahead of all this? Yeah, what, what I would say, if it is about getting ahead, then you need a plan. You need to, uh, to start by understanding what your impacts are, to try and understand what sort of uh, best practices are there within your sector, within your industry, um, try and look for benchmarks, look what other companies are already doing in this space. Um, try and, and, and look internally because probably through award submissions or tender processes, a lot of information is already there. Big challenge that we find a lot with our members when we start working with them is that the information is scattered all over the organization, but there isn't a centralized way of doing it. Members of uh, BITC that have achieved the business working responsibly, Mark, I'm sure they're, they're nodding, thinking about the, the, the challenge of putting all that information together. So put the information together, work with our industry associations. I think it's also important to try and, and, and advance and raise the standards within, within your own industry and improve your communication because you will find that there's a huge appetite for this, this type of information. Um, see where the opportunities are for influencing your customers, your suppliers, uh, community at large, and, and, and you will find that there's a huge appetite for this. So, so that would be my, my recommendation. And I'm obviously happy to, to, to talk further about this, about how we, how, how we can support companies on, on, on putting this all in a coherent and thorough strategy. You need a strategy. And, and we always say, well, I'm quoting Paul Pullman, who you and I interviewed last year in a webinar, um, you, you have to treasure, you treasure what you measure, be it uh, biodiversity, climate change, diversity and inclusion, and watch this space. Um, we're going to be launching incredible commitments uh, from our network uh, later on in 2021, where we are taking tangible actions to address all this. Thomas, we might uh, catch up uh, towards the end of March when this new legislation is, is discussed and, and give our point of view and give an update to our audiences of you know, what they need to know then. So we'll catch up then in March. Absolutely. Great. I'd love to and looking forward to more. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Mayan.